I've got plans to put a different fuel injector in this bike in the hopes that I can uh, help it maintain freeway speed. Um, but before I go ahead and try and make this bike any faster, there's some uh, routine maintenance jobs that I've been putting off just because I genuinely don't want to do them. Um, chiefly, I need to get in here and check the valve clearances. Um, now, the service manual says don't do this until 15,000 kilometers, but this bike's had a pretty hard life and we're sitting at just over 12,000 now. So the way I see it is better to get it out the way sooner rather than later. Incidentally, I've been tracking the fuel economy for over 9,000 kilometers now, and we're still getting an average of 2.9 liters per 100 Ks, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, we're sitting at just over 12,000 kilometers. Um, now, the important thing uh, when we're doing the valves is to make sure you do it on a cold, cold engine. Like, don't even start it once. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the side panels. Uh, we're going to assume that GoPro can see me because I don't care. Uh, we're going to remove the side panels and uh, move the uh, fuel tank up. Now I've just realised that my Phillips head screwdriver is inside so I need to go and get that. Okay, now this is less of a how-to and more like a get ready with me style video. I always like to put these screws back in the frame just to keep track of them. Now, Mr. Richard Shepard pointed out in a recent video about cleaning out this, and I have never once pulled that off. That is the uh, drain for the airbox. Also, it's that is the crank case feeder hose which leads into the airbox and this is the lowest point of the airbox so anything that uh, gathers there will collect in there so we'll make that my first job uh, I'm really just getting experimental with the uh, the camera angles here because I know the GoPro is not brilliant at um, sort of close-up style stuff so we will just see how we go all right we're going to assume it can see me it is literally just squeeze there. that just went flying off into the distance now I have to find it because of course that happened couldn't have just been simple could it no it can't have gone that far it's nothing but nothing but grass here you know what that sucks that went flying I've got no idea where it landed Right, this, this, this is not, this is not going well for me. Right, well, I just lost the clamp off that, which is a pain, but I'm gonna go put a cable tie around it. That is gross. I have never once pulled that off in 12,000 kilometers and there appears to be a lot of gunk that's blown back into that tube. 
I'm going to get in there. <sighs> Some might say it's a perfectly reasonable option to leave this off and let it vent to the air. Uh, I'm going to put it back on though. That was just gross, but it's clear-ish. It's not full at any rate. Right, let me go get my cable tie. Ow. One, more, one last look in here for that missing bracket. Got it. Aha. Well, I found it in the end. It was, you know, in this atrociously long grass. But unfortunately, I do not have the luxury of a garage to do this in a clean and clear working environment. But it just goes to show that these springs are under pressure. And do keep an eye on it. Um, I was just going to put a cable tie around there. It would have got me through. Um, so, all right, let me just wipe wipe so i haven't taken the other side of the cover off but uh i have been in here once before um you know just to have a sticky beak basically what we need is an eight millimeter socket a deep socket for getting this off getting this cover and this cover off will give us access to the stator which will just make things a little bit easier to turn um, when we want to find top dead center rather than putting the bike in gear and rotating the wheel. This is my toolbox. It's not anything fancy by any means, but so long as nothing falls out of it, I can generally find what I'm looking for. So this will be a little bit easier if the handlebars are straight. We're just up on the center stand here, so tight to turn by hand. All right, pop that down. Now what I like to do here, screw that in by a few bits, just get a block of wood. Shovel it in like that and lifting Lifting the tank up just by this much just gives us that little bit more uh, freedom of access in here, which is going to be very, very useful uh, later on. Um, so what did I say we needed? We needed our 8 mil. All right. Now, I do have an 8 mil there, but an 8 mil deep socket, which you need just for that one bolt in here. Uh, otherwise, the bolts are all pretty accessible. So all this is, is removing the covers. Okay. Now those are both the same size. Now this panel just lifts away like that. Now while we've got this off, it will be a good opportunity to get in there and clean all that gunk from the chain. And this is of course access to the front sprocket. And it's not too bad in there. Um, but one of the jobs I need to do today is to lubricate that chain and so we might leave that cover off and give that a good a good clean out in there because uh, often the front sprocket gets neglected when doing the chain so what i'm looking at here is that these are just tucked in there all right which gives us access to that bolt there 
just pull these wires out the way and we've got to make sure that they go back in there. I have had all this off before but it's been over a year since I've done it. Now this is just a cover of course so they're not massively tight. Now these are different bolts to the front sprocket cover so make sure you keep them separately. Okay and there's our stator cover here. Now you may choose to keep each bolts inside their respective cover but I've got them separated down here um, so I'm going to just leave the covers under the bike there okie dokie so considering that this bike does not sit out in the weather it's less than two years old and there's already a rust build up around here but I don't think it really, really matters. There's the engine code, JC83E, if that means anything to anyone. Um, the reason that I took that off is that when we, when we want to turn the engine to top dead center, we will rotate this to do it. And as you can see, the engine's under compression. So what we're gonna do is pop around the other side and remove the spark plug, which is a really good opportunity to see what kind of condition uh, that plug is in. Now be very careful not to drop this plug Right, now looking at this plug, it's definitely on the leaner side of things because there's that white sort of chalky uh, residue. Um, I do have plans to change this spark plug, however I don't have a, a spare to go with it. But that is a CPR8EA9. That actually looks like that's a little bent. I need to put this safely over here. And of course now that we've removed compression from the system, this turns much more freely. So. Here and here are two 10 mil bolts. You know what? We're gonna to have to do it old school. Sometimes the mighty 10 mil spanner gets overlooked because you don't always have the space to work with a socket. All right. There is our head bolt. There's our second one. Now this... Okay. Now we want to be very careful of this rubber seal and I do need to pull that off and give it a good clean. I did have some seepage around here, but that was because I yanked this bit forwards to have a peek. So, now is the fun part. Whether or not we can see this. So, these are our, our tappet adjustments here. Obviously this is the intake side and this is the exhaust side. Now I will flash up the specs from the manual. Um, now intake side is 0 0.08 millimeters and the exhaust side is 
0.2 millimeters with a 0 0.02 a 0 0.02 millimeter fluctuation either way so now that okay what we what we're doing here how well the GoPro can see okay so let's count our cycles as I turn the stator here much easier than rotating the rear wheel which that's the other way that people do it put the bike into gear rotate the rear wheel and that'll cause the the whole engine to turn but I just find it so much easier with the bike in neutral to do this all right so exhaust valve is opening Boop. we keep turning intake is opening closing now what we're counting and you can feel it too top dead center is where these two lines here and here line up with the engine block not directly vertical 90 degrees so line it up with there and it's where you can wiggle and wiggle both valves which means that there is no tension on either of them so if we keep on turning this let's watch okay so exhaust bop turns and now we cannot wiggle that valve at all intake turns we still cannot wiggle that at all but at top dead center there's movement and there's movement that's what you want to look for it's that movement of the valves that is key um, so a little timing chain looks nice and lubricated which is very good to see there's not an excess of crap in there so I'll take all this and move around to the next side now the GoPro will not see it's not bright enough to see anyway but that cylinder will be at the top of its stroke and now that we're here this is the side we'll be putting the feeler gauges on there's the movement we're looking for and it's the feeler gauge that we're going to put in between there which okay so there's the movement now I was hoping that I'd get away with not doing much of an adjustment but they actually they feel tight so the intake side needs to be 0.08 I mean look look at how flimsy that is you've really got to make sure that they're not stuck together and that they're not bent but this is that's not even going to pick it up is it 0 0.08 millimeters now forgive me here I cannot give you a good viewing angle that is our point oop, that is our point oh eight millimeter and it is perfect it is it's fitted in there and there is just a little bit of bite a little bit of bite in there so let me see if I can do this one-handed to get that in just slide it across the top and just give it a wiggle backwards and forwards and the key is that there is resistance in there just that littlest bit but you can feel it be light and gentle you can feel that resistance on there and moving it side to side there is just enough resistance to bite it now the exhaust side needs to be 0.2 and we should just be able to slide this one in the theory here is that if this is 0.2 then this 0 0.08 millimeter should be floppy jalopy and way too loose in there
which I actually don't think it is. I think the exhaust side might be a bit too tight. I'm going to say this, the intake, the intake valve was spot on. Uh, the exhaust side is 0.2 millimeters. The intake is 0 0.08. So theoretically, this 0 0.08 should have fit right into the valves and been floppy jalopy all around. Um, what I can do now is figure out just how tight it is. So we've got 0.08 mil. Let's look for the next size down. 0 0.0. 0.0 okay let's look at I have a 0 0.05 mil so that 0 0.05 mil went in and was probably just about right but this exhaust valve does not want to be 0 0.08 it wants to be 0 0.2 of a mil so now what I need to do is very carefully undo that locking nut and then loosen this top piece. Now the difficulty is tightening down the lock nut without turning this adjusting piece further. Um, there's really nothing I can do for a, a proper viewing angle, I think. Uh, that is probably as best of a viewing angle as I can as I can provide. All right, nine millimeters. So this is rather tight. Okay, don't strip them. Do not strip them. That was nice and tight, wasn't it? Now we are looking at the top here to make sure that that's not actually turning, which is my biggest concern. Okay, so that, this is now finger loose. So I need to find my 0 0.2 millimeter feeler gauge, which just to reiterate, does not fit. So what we're going to do, I don't have an actual tool for this, but we are just going to try and rotate that. Okay, that's nice and loose now. I really don't think that needle nose pliers are the way to go. But I don't have anything so, so small. There is a proper tool that you can buy to do this exact job. It's like a little, a little adjusting wrench. feel like this is where it's going to get difficult. Okay, so make a slight adjustment. All right, now see, remember this is our point two. That is much, much, much too loose now. So we're going to kind of turn this, I've got a hair in there, and the chair as well. can't tell whether I'm moving the oh, I am see now that's too tight so can I get back in here and <sighs> loosen it a little just give me half a turn Okay, 
that is marginally too tight. I cannot actually squeeze the feeler gauge in there. Okay. It is loose enough to turn by hand, which is where you've got a bit, oh, look at that. That, that is perfect. Probably a little bit on the loose side, but that is gripping just enough. Now, what I want to do is I want to get my nine mil. I'm actually going to tighten that down with the feeler gauge in there. So if I can't pull the, if I can't pull the, um, the gauge out, then I know Okay, that's not fully tightened down yet. Okay. I feel like that's too loose now. Too tight. Much too tight. So then we're going to come back in here and loosen it just a smidge. Still too tight. That, that is spot on. So provided I can nip this down without, yes. One more nip. That's good. All right. So we've adjusted that. Let's see, get you in there. We've adjusted that and there is just enough bite on there to a little bit of resistance. And just to confirm, that is our 0 0.2 millimeter uh, feeler. All right, it is very difficult to make these adjustments um, once you think you got it just right. You go to tighten it, and uh, the adjustment changes. So you've really got to test and retest. Um, and that is just the perfect amount of resistance. And of course, 0.2 mil will not, will not fit on the intake side. And there is our 0.08 millimeters. And so let's just feed that back in there to confirm. A little bit harder with the thinner gauges because they are flimsy, but again, I did not need to make a single adjustment on these valves. All right, I am now ready to put uh, the valve cover back on. Um, I had heard mention that the exhaust valve on this engine uh, does tighten, and that's exactly what appears to have happened there because there was actually less, uh, less of a gap on the exhaust side than the intake side, and well, there should be more than more than double the gap. Um, obviously, 0 0.08 and 0 0.2.
okay that's 0.12 the difference that's a considerable difference considering the tiny gaps we're working with um, so what I want to do here is just to give the mating surfaces a bit of a wipe here as I say all I wanted to do was give these surfaces a bit of a wipe just to clean them up when my engine light came on during the last ride uh, I did notice a bit of a uh, bit of oil residue here and I was worried about that um, but what that was was this seal here now I'm gonna need two hands for this this rubber seal should not need to be replaced it should last it's rubber not paper but you can see that milky white means that I did the wrong thing by pulling it out of the seal to to peek at the to peek at the cam chain um, that broke the seal uh, here and it just didn't seat very well so I need to make sure that that surface is properly clean so that it seals and I don't get any more of that vapor uh, leaking out this is also a very good opportunity to investigate the seal for any cracks now it's not going to hurt to wipe this down because uh, it will get all the oil it needs once the engine's running but by giving it a good wipe down means you get to inspect all of the surfaces for debris and wear and anything that might break that seal so yeah we just want to go around and make sure that that's seated and that there's no grit or especially around here that is going to stop that seal from well sealing all right so there isn't a lot of room to work with up here so sort of slide it up and over and this is where you need to make sure that this seal is seated firmly now just to, what I did is I yanked that out of its seal and obviously I never sealed it up properly and that's why I was getting this residue uh, around there which is very 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 bad there is a correct torque to do these head bolts up to and I will I've got the service manual I will flash those up on screen now don't lose your head bolts idiot but the reality is that rubber seal is quite forgiving so just so long as you're doing the pressures up evenly there are only two bolts holding this entire assembly on this one needs to be a smidgen tighter all right now we can go ahead and oop, tighten that tighten that no need to over tighten but they need to be firm right now we need to go ahead and put our stator cover on currently this one making sure that these wires don't get in the way until you actually put them back where they belong as with doing anything up don't over tighten it do them up evenly that doesn't mean that you need to do half a turn for the entire thread but don't just don't actually start to tighten 
your bolts until they're all in place. Shut up! Again, there is proper torque settings, but they're always between 8 and 12 well, foot-pounds even. When you tighten these up, don't tighten them any tighter than you would a soft drink bottle. You know, shake a bottle of Coke up and put the lid on. That's about the same amount of pressure that you need. And it does need to be snug because you do not want these backing out. Okay, and four. Don't forget to tuck these wires back away because they will interfere with the chain otherwise. Just tuck them right back in there as far as they'll go. For the time being, I'm going to leave the chain cover off um, because I'm going to get in there and clean it and tension the chain anyway. Uh, but what I do need to do now is go ahead and put this spark plug back in. Uh, as I say, I do plan to change it. Uh, it's not technically due for another 3,000 kilometres or so. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that plug anyway, so it's not going to hurt to put it back in. So I've got the spark plug socket on there just to make it easier to grip. But you just want to wind it just in with your fingers. And it's a very light touch because you need to be able to... You will feel it if you've crossed a thread. And if you crossed a thread, you may as well throw your engine in the bin. As with every single fastener and bolt, there is a correct torque setting. Not too tight. One. I should not be doing this one-handed, but our spark plug boot goes on. Nice and firm. Make sure it's not twisted. Now, because the two other jobs I need to do today are chain and oil change, I'm now just about ready to start the bike. So, must not forget to reattach our tank. Now, That actually sounds a lot smoother. There was a rattle coming from this engine. And it was probably that exhaust valve not opening up as far as it needs to. That sounds brilliantly smooth. And look, it's clear. We are going to let this bike warm up. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a double whammy here. I'm going to get the oil draining and then I'm going to do the chain while the oil's actually draining uh, because today I'm also replacing the uh, oil filter. All right. The good news is be careful because this can get hot really quickly. There's no immediate oil spurting out of the uh, the valve cover. It, it sounds really smooth too, actually. Uh, I'm just going to let that run for a few minutes and I'll go and get my oil change stuff sorted out. 